During the offseason last December, there was one day where Red Sox fans felt a ton of pain. I mean, there were a lot of days, but especially this one. It was more so a night where Red Sox fans felt a ton of pain when it was announced that longtime Red Sox shortstop and two-time World Series champion, now a free agent, Xander Bogarts was signing with the San Diego Padres. Earlier that same day, the Red Sox had agreed to a contract with outfielder Masataki Yoshida from Japan, someone who had never had a big league at bat. And to make matters worse, the immediate thoughts on the signing were that it was a massive overpay. So the Red Sox apparently overpaid for someone who has never played in the big leagues while also letting one of their best players for the last decade leave and go to the Padres. Yikes. Not good. The Red Sox obviously felt good about the Yoshida signing, but it seemed as if literally every other executive around the league did not feel good about it. In fact, they thought it was crazy and a terrible move by Boston to pay that much for him. If you're part of the 70% of viewers not subscribed, make sure to hit that button if you enjoy the content. Thank you. Multiple articles were written about how dumb the Yoshida contract seemed to be. Kylie McDaniel, who's an MLB insider for ESPN, immediately wrote that he didn't have Yoshida in his top 50 available free agents, also saying that he asked 10 executives and scouts around the league to see if they viewed Yoshida the same way he did, and they all apparently came to the same conclusion, all agreeing that the Red Sox overpaid for Yoshida. One of those sources actually texted McDaniel that their ball club quote-unquote thought he was worth less than half of what they paid, with another texting him quote-unquote, I have no words. Keith Law of The Athletic said the same thing, that he didn't have Yoshida in his top 50 free agents, while also saying that he didn't think Yoshida's power in Japan would translate to the big leagues, adding on that he thinks the Red Sox should have used the money they gave to Yoshida, who he didn't think was worth it, and used that money to put toward another player in a different position of need. This is what Keith Law also said, quote, He might be a regular outfielder on some teams, but I think for a contender, he might fit more as an extra outfielder. And if I'm right, this is not a good deal for Boston. Given the massive void they have behind the plate right now, and the fact that Wilson Contreras just signed for less than Boston spent just on Yoshida, I'm just confused, end quote. So to put it simply, most executives around the league, most insiders, most quote unquote experts thought Masataki Yoshida was really overpaid. In fact, like I quoted earlier, one of the sources that agreed with McDaniel told him that the team that they work for thought Yoshida was paid more than double what he was worth. The only people who had faith, tremendous faith actually, in Yoshida were the Red Sox and former longtime Orioles outfielder Adam Jones, who was incredibly based for his take. Now, Jones may be a little biased because he actually played with Yoshida in Japan for a year on the Oryx Buffaloes, but Adam had some really high praise for his former teammate, saying that he's ready for Major League Baseball and going as far as to compare him to Juan Soto. Quote, I say he's like the Japanese Juan Soto. He can hit the ball to all fields, all speeds like Juan Soto. He hits everything and walks and doesn't swing outside of the zone, end quote. So although Adam Jones and the Red Sox executives may have been in the minority, the Sox still decided to go big on Yoshida, at least for someone people expected much less out of on the market. Turns out all of those other executives on other teams, those quote unquote experts, yeah, they were wrong. Yoshida has always been a good bat. That's nothing new. He played seven seasons in Japan and only hit under 300 one time. It was his very first season in professional baseball and he still hit 296. He was always a good on base guy, tending to walk either just about as many times as he struck out or walking more times than he struck out. Literally walking two times as many times as he struck out in his final year in Japan in 2022. And to add on to that, Yoshida has some pop. He's not going to go out and rival Aaron Judge and Pete Alonso for the damn home run chase, but he can hit bombs. He probably could hit more, like Ichiro Suzuki could have, but also like Ichiro Suzuki, more home runs would have likely also diminished the other parts of his game and would probably make him a less valuable player. So for Yoshida to be a 300 hitter who doesn't strike out often, walks as an on-base guy while also having some pop? That's a great sounding baseball player to me, and that's exactly what Masataki Yoshida has been ever since he put on a Red Sox uniform. It started back in the World Baseball Classic, when Yoshida helped Team Japan to a championship alongside Shohei Otani, hitting a clutch game-tying three-run home run in one of the final games against Team Mexico in Miami off of a left-handed pitcher. He was really impressive. And Red Sox fans started to have some pretty high expectations for Yoshida once the season began. In Masataki Yoshida's first 13 big league games, though, he wasn't good. He wasn't striking out much, in fact he was actually walking more than he struck out, 
but he wasn't doing anything when he hit the ball. And for a guy who's supposed to hit 300, a 167 batting average was not going to cut it. Maybe Yoshida was just adjusting to the big league pitchers. Maybe he was just in a rough stretch at the plate. But whatever it was, he figured it out. Because ever since April 20th, Masataki Yoshida has been one of the best hitters in all of baseball. In over 50 games since April 20th, Yoshida is hitting 342 with an OPS over 940, swatting 7 home runs, and as for the walks and strikeouts, he has walked just 9 less times than he has struck out in that span. Yoshida isn't a very big guy, in fact he's way on the shorter side at 5'8", but don't you dare for a second think that this man isn't strong and doesn't have power. In a recent game in Minnesota against the Twins, Yoshida hit a ball that only David Ortiz was seemingly able to hit at target field. Way up into the second deck in right center field, 447 feet deep, which is also the farthest hit ball by a Red Sox hitter this season so far. There are plenty of candidates on the Red Sox who you would think would hit the longest home run on the team before you think of Yoshida. Uh, yet here we are, with this man not just hitting over 300 on the season, with a good on base percentage to go with it, but he's also a sneaky power threat that's not so sneaky. He has been a godsend to this Red Sox team. Yoshida's also a very likable and humble guy, which isn't at all surprising considering he's from Japan, but it's always good and fun to have such a wholesome person like him doing so well. Although Yoshida doesn't know English very well, the other players really love him, with Masataka also forming a good and unique bond with his manager, Alex Cor. Despite being 29 years old, Yoshida is actually a rookie, major league rookie that is. It's weird to think of him as one, considering he played 7 seasons worth of professional baseball beforehand, but he is technically in the same boat as his 23 year old teammate Tristan Cassis. With that said, Yoshida recently showed some humbleness by saying he doesn't want to potentially win the rookie of the year award, calling it an honor, but also saying that he feels he isn't a rookie and that the younger rookies deserve it more. I think part of the lesson learned here overall about the doubt regarding Masataki Yoshida when he signed with Boston is that predicting anything baseball related is damn hard. You never truly know who's going to become a star, but apparently the Red Sox did. They had a lot of faith in him when seemingly nobody else did, and it's paid off so far in 2023 as Yoshida has proven the experts wrong.